Okay, well, good morning, everyone. I hope this uh, this video finds you well at home. Um, I had a question from one of the students about a about sine and sine inverse. In particular, a question like this: sine of sine inverse of six. So here we are taking as the input of sine the sine inverse of something larger than one or smaller than negative one. Um, this question has no answer. Uh, this is undefined. And I want to just quick give a, an explanation for that. So there's your answer if you're just looking for the answer. Um, this is just undefined. Or does not exist. Um, so here's the explanation for that. We need to remember that sine as a function takes things from its domain, which are angles, and it maps them to, it takes them to, it connects them with these things that are ratios. Um, and that ratio on the unit circle is always actually just the y coordinate of a point on the unit circle. So if we go back to the unit circle here, this has radius one. The ratio we're talking about here for any angle is just this height here, the y coordinate divided by the radius, which is just one, which is why we always just know that the, the x, y coordinate on the unit circle is the cosine of an angle t and the sine of an angle t. So if this angle is t, this point's x and y coordinates are cosine t and y t. So let's look at the ratios for sine of t. How big can sine be? Well, if we take an angle of pi over two, that puts us right up here, which means that ratio is a height one. So sine can be as large as one. How small could sine be? Well, down here, sine can take the angle of three pi over two, so go all the way down to here, you take this angle of three pi over two, it takes the angle down to a height or ratio of negative one. So let me just reiterate that over here. If we take the angle pi over two, or actually pi over two plus any multiple of two pi, then the sine takes us to the largest value that we'll get ever, and that's one. If we take an angle of three pi over two, plus any multiple of two pi n, these multiples of two pi n just mean that we go around the circle a full time, then sine takes us to the smallest ratio that we'll ever get, which is negative one. Sine will never take us to something bigger than one or smaller than negative one uh, because we're working here on the unit circle. Uh, and that y coordinate on the unit circle will never be larger than one or smaller than negative one. Now this would be a little different if we had something like 12 sine of t because then we could in fact get something like 12 or we could get a, a value of negative 12 out. But if we're dealing with just sine of t, then the largest this will ever be uh, is one. And smallest at a value of negative one. Okay, so now let's talk about the inverse. So sine takes an angle and brings us to a ratio as big as one, as small as negative one. The inverse function, sine inverse, 
takes us backwards. Okay? It takes a ratio and gives us an angle. Well, the only ratios that we can plug in here, the only allowed inputs are ratios that the sign could have originally given us. If we plugged in a ratio that was not between one and negative one, what angle would we get? Well, who knows? Because sine is not defined in that way. We cannot get a ratio bigger than one or smaller than negative one. So who knows what angle can give us a ratio of two? There's none. So this, this sine inverse business in this question, this is undefined. Because what angle gives a ratio of six? That's what this is asking. Right here, this, this is asking what angle gives us a ratio of six? And the answer is none. Sine never gives a ratio bigger than one. So we don't know what the sine inverse of six is. Okay, I hope that helps.